In this video, we're going to talk about flash loans and arbitrage MEV bots that you can run on Ethereum. So what you're looking at right now is EigenFee and you can basically see all the transactions. So what I want to start with is you can go to EigenFee and go to flash loan and you're going to see everything within uh, flash loans, how many flash loans were taken in the last seven days. You can see the answer right away. You have 1000 flash loans, uh, MEV TX counts and a bunch of other stuff. So first of all, let's start with the flash loans in the uh, explaining what that is for people who don't know. Basically, a flash loan is uh, taken a quick loan that you pay in one transaction. So basically you can borrow unlimited money because that's the that, that's the thing with, for example, Balancer where you can, they have basically a billion dollars worth of assets. They're giving away their uh, assets if you can pay that back in one transaction. So why would someone take a loan that uh, he or she has to pay back in one transaction? Basically because there's some kind of arbitrage opportunity. And this is what we're going to talk in this video as well. So you can take a loan from Balancer, another famous source is uh, Ave. Ave introduced its own flash loans. You can also have a code uh, for Ave. <coughs> So you can take that and create your own, for example, here one on Polygon Mumbai. Uh, so on a test net, test everything you want and run it. Uh, same with uh, Balancer. You have the code if you want to run the code on uh, Balancer and take the, uh, take the flash loan. It's definitely possible. And also this is what Eigenfee will give you. So uh, basically how Eigenfee works is uh, it aggregates every transaction and you can see the purpose of uh, arbitrage. So those are the top flash loans, meaning uh, those that taken in the past seven days and the, the bigger, the higher they are on the list, the bigger the profit. So for example, if I were to click the first, you can see that someone made 141 thousand dollars on this single arbitrage uh, it was done two days ago and basically you can go to what's happening here i actually opened that in another uh, on etherscan because that's easier to sh to see basically that's swapping so this is where, where the arbitrage is coming so basically that's swapping uh, on uh, on uh, ether on uh, uniswap and basically you're trying to uh, leverage wrapped ETH versus Coinbase wrapped ETH. And there was some kind of a difference between the pools. Uh, someone borrowed uh, on, on, on Balancer, someone bo borrowed ETH, uh, he got 400 ETH, and basically he managed to swap that for uh, 462 Coinbase, Coinbase wrapped staked ETH, and then uh, pl plunged that into Uniswap, got back the Coinbase and managed to pay back the debt. So this way is probably this way the arbitrage worked is that uh, there was some kind of price discrepancy that he managed to get into quickly and paid for the gas, uh, got the transaction going and managed to get the profit. So this is the top one. Uh, this doesn't happen very often. If you look at all the other arbitrages and all the, for example, the whole flow uh, of everything, if you were to look at the, for example, uh, amount that people were taking, uh, well, the amount that people are taking is pretty high because that's like $2 billion uh, in total. But basically the amount that people are making is much smaller. So that was the highest one. Uh, if you look at this arbitrage here down below, then basically you can see that the profit is only $1,000. I mean, it's still a lot for one transaction, but you know, it's still a lot of work and you have some costs, you have risk of that uh, failing, you pay a lot for a gas and stuff like that. But this is another transaction I wanted to show you. Uh, you can see that someone is actually swapping Pepe for uh, wrapped ETH and back, uh, and basically he manages to make a profit of like one ETH altogether, uh, or around one ETH. Uh, there's the transaction on Etherscan uh, that if you want to see, uh, the, it's easier to probably see here. So you can see that he's taking a loan from day Y, day X, uh, so buying with that uh, Ether, because he's borrowing Ether, uh, he's buying with that Ether Pepe and then selling that Pepe for a profit. So he uses the fact that maybe uh, the pool, pool, the pools were not balanced or maybe uh, there's something that the price moved up a lot, there was this movement and he sold a little bit uh, later. Something happened here that m got him this, uh, this kind of arbitrary opportunity so uh, usually what you have to do is go between different kind of um, uh, exchanges so that on one exchange for example ether is uh, 
cheaper than on the other one and you swap between the two so you know you, you swap basically usdc for ether go to other exchange swap, swap from ether to usdc back and if you manage to do that all that in one transaction basically this is the uh, this is the arbitrage you're doing so those kind of opportunities are happening over and over again because of course uh, crypto is not optimal and even in a tra traditional finance markets those kind of opportunities pop up so it's worth looking for them uh, so this is uh, what you can do you can basically go through any kind of transactions this is another example of uh, this kind of uh, flash loan take it you take a flash loan from um, I think balancer again and then basically do a bunch of swaps with different applications this time so you have like uh, DeFi saver you go to Uniswap the zero X exchange that you use uh, a bunch of things that you use this this is probably more uh, arbitrage in the more pure form where you have Uniswap and 0x protocol and you do the arbitrage between the two exchanges borrowing uh, something uh, in between uh, you have these transactions all also on uh, also on uh, on eigen fee if you want to look for it so altogether uh, you can see here uh, a bunch of arbitrages people also borrow uh, and use flash loans for sandwiches uh, this is probably less often because usually you have this additional gas you have to pay for the flash loan and it doesn't make sense sometimes especially if you're earning like small amounts so for example Jared from Subway does not use flash loans to, to do sandwiches uh, but for example if you, the, you have two transactions here that have borrowed like 20 million dollars for a single uh, sandwich uh, and there was this kind of sandwich, sandwich was made on a pool uh, of, uh, I think on a circle, I guess. Uh, that was the that was the the thing here, uh, basically between different kind of uh, this this was this, this three pool on different kind of uh, yeah on curve. Sorry, not not circle curve. Uh, it was done on those three kind of uh, stable coins. Uh, so uh, this was the this was the arbitrage made here. There are also super complex arbitrage. So for example, if you look at uh, the latest flash loans, so those one the, the most profitable. But if you go down on eigen fee uh, a little bit below, then you can see a bunch of other stuff. And for example, I think this was this one. You can see the whole token flow if you click on it, uh, and you can see how complicated actually it is, and that people are doing really strange and interesting stuff with uh, with flash loans and doing kind of uh, kind of like very complicated, um, very kind of complicated with like 15 transactions going within one uh, arbitrage. Uh, I think there was like a, 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 a somewhere on Twitter I saw a guy posting like. 80 transactions with uh, within w within one block uh, arbitrage which was really crazy uh, and you really can see people doing really really interesting stuff uh, if you if you want to go into and analyze that uh, this is complicated again like with MEV bots if you're seeing online someone posting for you uh, ready to use code that will make you money it's definitely a scam nobody will share with you working code for uh, MEV arbitrage MEV bots or anything like that and the reason is very simple this is a competitive game and you have to optimize your code to win if they were to share their optimized code it means that you will take opportunity from them because the more people you have the less opportunity you have yourself uh, this is the game of optimization you can see another example here of uh, like 15 transactions this is like super or maybe 23 23 transactions within one uh, one uh, uh, arbitrage which is super complicated uh, and people definitely won't be sharing things like that so I also wanted to make this video to explain to you that if you're counting on free money this is definitely not it and using flash loans using MEV arbitrage is probably one of the hardest way to make money in crypto however on the other hand if you have technical abilities if you have technical skills and if you like technical challenges this is probably the best way uh, to start because uh, there's definitely money to be made uh, maybe you won't be making and printing millions of dollars but that there's definitely something to be made uh, if you focus on that and if you'll be patient with uh, going through what's what's happening in the space so flash loans are running uh, one thing you have liquidations as well that you can try uh, liquidation is another thing and of course you have sandwiches that I've been talking about uh, in the past few videos uh, going back to flash loans again I wanted to show you that what are the most common protocols for for taking a flash loan Loan. so basically you can use it on you can take a flash loan on balancer but also day by day x and avap those are the the top protocols you of course have here here um uniswap being used for uh for exchanges 
Uh, so all that is pretty, pretty cool. I really recommend you going through a bunch of arbitrages and seeing how people arbitrage different coins, uh, where they take the flash loan and go between two or more exchanges to actually uh, chase the small difference. So most of the arbitrages are not really making that much of the money. So if you uh, look at the, for example, the latest one, I can click and uh, take that. This actually is unprofitable. So even though the cost was $40, uh, this also shows you something. So someone borrowed like, uh, you know, thousands of dollars. He, he tried to do some kind of arbitrage between different coins. Uh, but basically he lost, he lost a little bit, but still he lost, uh, he lost a couple of cents. So it's not that much, but still it's not like you be printing money. And if, especially if you look at all the uh, recent flash loans and how people are using that, you'll be seeing more and more uh, what are those transactions. So this one was for $8,000. You can see here an arbitrage for like, or maybe I can go into this one. This, this was for $13,000. So someone actually borrowed around $30,000 to make a profit of $17. So you made the profit of $17. This is a risky game as, as, again, because if you uh, count that wrongly, if the gas is not right, then basically you will start losing money. Uh, there's a lot of mathematics going into that. There's a lot of code optimization. Uh, but the cool stuff is that everything is on chain. You can analyze a lot of transactions. Uh, so if you look at the token flow chart, then you can see that someone is basically borrowing USDC uh, to exchange for WET, uh, wrapped ETH and OM and a bunch of other tokens and basically trying to make revenue on that. Uh, he made, he basically made a profit of like a couple of dollars uh, in the end. So uh, think for yourself whether that's uh, worth the worth the challenge. Uh, of course, uh, there is some money definitely to be made, but it's not easy to be taken. And there's a lot of technical challenges uh, if, uh, if you try to do it. Uh, on the other hand, I think understanding flash loans and understanding MEV really get, gets you better insights into blockchains, into how Ethereum works. So even if you're not a technical expert, even if you don't want to make money this way, I think it's worth taking your time and basically analyzing what's happening on chain, uh, especially that EigenFee is such a great tool for going through different transactions. You don't have to try to do the same thing, but try to understand what those guys are doing and maybe use some of that knowledge then later on to be better on, on chain, understand better what people are doing on chain and how. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I tend to cover basically all the kind of narratives from MEV to meme coins to different new DeFi protocols and everything that's interesting in crypto. So subscribe and see you in the next video.